Now let's look at the high frequency effects. So let's first look at this uh, hypothetical case. And we want to know what's the maximum speed that the carriers can move in the channel between the source and the drain. And that channel length uh, is indicated by L here. So let's let's see. So what would we what would we need to know about the, the carrier movement here? Well let's say that they can move up to the saturation velocity, which we talked about before. So saturation velocity in silicon, if you recall, is uh, on the order of 10 to the 7th centimeters per second. Okay, so let's assume that our transistor has a length L, uh, maybe of a micron. Then the time it would take for a carrier to move from the drain to the source would just be uh, 10 to the negative 4th centimeter, that's 1 micron, divided by 10 to the 7th centimeters per second, or 10 picoseconds. Change that to frequency, that's 100 megahertz. So that's a pretty fast uh, rate. I mean, your computers don't run at 100 gigahertz. Um, it's not as fast as it could be for some very demanding applications, uh, like millimeter wave or, or, or um, terahertz wave kind of technology. And if we look at this, what could we change to make it faster? Well, let's see, we can't change the saturation velocity of silicon, that's a material property. Um, we could make the, the length shorter, though, and that would help us to increase the frequency. But it seems like the saturation velocity is really not the limiting factor. According to this calculation, the, the transistor should work to a pretty high frequency. But we don't get close to that frequency, usually, for a transistor with this kind of dimensions. So what happens is that the capacitances that are internal to the MOSFET that we looked at um, in order to develop the small signal equivalent circuit, those capacitance have associated charging times to them. And those charging times create the limiting factor in um, how fast the MOSFET can switch.